Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be showing you how to add a photo or add an image onto a layer. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to share, and also don't forget to subscribe as well. Now, if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. One of the most frequent questions I get asked from beginners with Photoshop Elements is how do you add an image onto a layer or a photo onto a layer. It's very easy to do, but there are a few different ways of doing this and some are better than others. Let me just go through a few of these examples for you here. Let's just close this down and we'll get back to building that in just a second. First off, we'll start with a brand new file, just a blank file. This is the Photoshop Elements default size, which is a width of 6, a height of 4, resolution of 300, choose OK. Now mine comes in as a floating window. If you're brand new, yours will come in as a docked window like that. Let me first show you how to do that because that's important to be able to do one of the techniques here for adding a photo onto a layer. Go up to Edit, come down here to Preferences, and click on General. And right here, that checkbox right there, it says allow floating documents in expert mode. That's normally unchecked when you first install Photoshop Elements. And that's the first thing I always do whenever I set up a new version of the program. I come in here and I check that checkbox, choose OK, and now you'll get floating windows. The nice thing about a floating window is that you can have more than one window open and then you can drag layers between them. Let's just put this back over to the dock. You can also dock windows like that or grab the tab and float it. Okay, so now see why that's useful. If I go up here to File, and come down to Open. I have a few examples in here. If you want to use the ones that I'll be using in this video, there's a link for downloading those and you'll find that in the description. We'll be using this background image right here and this dog image right over there. I'm just going to click on the background image here, this bokeh image. Open that up. And here we go. It's just lights that are blurry in the distance. Now this comes in as a floating window, as you can see right here, and one of the nice things about floating windows is I can go up here and just grab this background layer and drag it onto my other file, and it copies that layer over to the other file. It's that easy to bring this image into the other file. Now one thing about this is that it comes in at the exact relative size of this image to that image. So if your images are vastly different in size, this could cause you some problems. Now in here you can fix this just use the Control T keyboard shortcut and that gives you these control handles on the outside of your image. You can then stretch this to fit. I'll just pull it up like that and then pull it down here and find a nice spot for that. Kind of like that. Looks pretty good. Click on the green check mark and there we go. There is our image. So that's one way. Simply drag and drop an image into your file by opening up both files at one time. Again, you need to have that floating document window checkbox taken care of, as I described previously. Now, another way to bring an image into Photoshop Elements to add it to a layer, and this is very good if your images are different sizes as well, is to use the Place command. And you'll find that over here, File, come down here where it says Place, click on that, and then choose the image you want to bring in. I'll bring in this dog right here, click on Place, and that brings the dog in and places it into your open file. Now, it's a little bit different here than the drag and drop that I just used. One, notice these kind of cross lines in here. This is coming in as what's called a smart object or smart layer. If I click on the checkbox here, a little check mark, it's now placed. And it tries to come in at the right size. You know, it, it expands it or contracts it to fit. Now, it's not quite exactly right. You can see a little bit of the background showing through on the two sides there, but it's real, real close. So it tries to match the size to fit. I think it's full size top to bottom. So it matches your size to fit, which oftentimes will help you, you know, save you a couple of steps. Something else about this, though, it's kind of hard to see on the thumbnail over here, but there's a little kind of funny box icon bottom right hand corner of that thumbnail which shows that this is a smart layer. Now there are two things about smart layers. First one is this is linked to the original image. So if I use that keyboard shortcut control T like this and I drag the image 
Photoshop Elements goes back to the original image and then refigures it from the original to this new size. If you're only changing the size once, that's no big deal. Both of them basically do the same thing. If I did this and then I resize it again, Control T, come in here and change the size again. Once again, Photoshop Elements is going to go back to the original file and refigure this size here from the original file and that's going to retain as much quality as possible. Let's just go ahead and do that green check mark. Now the one in the background, since I dragged and dropped this, the first resize was fine because it's working from the original size because that's what it came in as. If I change this size again, it's going to resize this image based upon the size or based upon the image we have right now inside of this file, not upon the original. So if I resized several times by dragging and dropping, this could lead to some loss of image quality. You know, it'll get just a little bit softer. It doesn't matter on this picture, obviously, but it could get just a little bit softer. So if you want to retain as much image quality as possible and you want to be able to resize, you think you may need to a few times, then do the place command because it does do that for you. And the other problem with the place command or the other difference of the place command is that as long as this is a smart object, you can't apply things like filters onto this because filters change the pixels and you can't change the pixels on a smart object. Let me just show you that. Go up here to filter. I'll do a filter gallery and here you go. It won't allow you to use filters on this layer. So I would need to convert this to a regular layer. Now, if you want to be able to change your size in the future, what I'd recommend doing is making a copy of this onto another layer. Again, it's another way of adding a layer or adding an image onto another layer. Real easy here. Just right click on the name of the layer and choose duplicate layer and OK. And it copies this layer onto this layer. So we now have a copy of this on a new layer. I can now hide this one. That's my smart object layer. And then up here, where it says copy, if I right click on the name and then choose simplify layer, this is now just a regular layer, no longer a smart object. So if I change the size again here a couple of times, it's going to be working from the current size, whatever that happens to be. But I can apply filters. Let's just see that real fast. Filter, filter gallery. This will bring up our filter gallery in here and we can then do some special effects on this thing by applying different filters onto this image in the filter gallery. There's kind of a crosshatch effect right down there. Here's a sprayed strokes. Here's a dark strokes effect. So you can apply these filters on this because it's a regular layer and not a smart layer. So in some ways having a smart layer is an advantage because you can resize it as much as you want and it's not going to hurt your image quality. In other ways it's a disadvantage because you can't apply filters onto it. Now, realistically speaking, most of the time you're only going to resize your image once or if you resize it a few times, it's going to be real small and you're not going to be noticing any image degradation from that. So in most instances, you don't really need to use the place command, but it does have some advantages on there if you think you'd be resizing your image. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to resize this image here just a bit. Control T keyboard shortcut and let's stretch that out so it just fills the page. There we go. And that's just big enough to fill a whole page. Choose OK. So there we go. That's our way of, you know, this place command version of putting an image onto a page. Now there is one more way to bring a layer in here. Let's just use a different image this time. Go up here to File and Open. I'll just use a regular image here as opposed to a photo just for variety's sake. So here we go. Here's the image. The other way to bring an image, to add an image onto a layer, is to take your image and then copy this. Go up to Select All. You kind of see right in there, little, little dancing or marching ants, this little kind of dotted line that moves around. So it's the whole thing is selected, the whole photograph is selected. And then choose Edit Copy. Go back over to your main file. Let's just get this out of the way. In our main file here, and then edit paste and it pastes that into this file from the original file so that's the third method of adding an image or adding a photo into a photoshop elements project is to copy from one file and paste into the other file 
basically that's all we're doing when doing the drag and drop is the same basic technique it's just that saves us a step so there you go that's the three main different ways or main ways of bringing or adding an image onto a layer adding a photograph onto a layer let's just go ahead and do one more bit in here so kind of finish off this discussion the main reason why you'd want to add one image onto a new layer is you want to be able to see a different background so we'll go ahead and we'll do that on this dog here so here's our dog photo now this is still the smart layer and this trick works on smart layers this is okay take the polygonal lasso tool down here or the regular lasso tool come down and click to new on your selection I normally set mine at a feathering of one pixel and let's just make just a selection right around the dog doesn't need to be perfect just don't go into the dog just come just outside like that when the dog is outside you can pull outside as well and then back into the photograph let's just pull up around this side there we go right over the top and right back down just cross over the line right where you started from that makes a selection around the dog now can downward says refine edge if you're working on an earlier version of Photoshop Elements, you might find this up under the Select menu instead, which is right here. Later versions have it down here in the Options. Click on Refine Edge. That gives you this Refine Edge mask in there. I have mine set on Overlay Mode, which is kind of an orange color in here. Just makes it really easy to see. Click on Smart Radius right there. It's a pretty small brush. You can see the brush size right there. Pretty small. You can adjust your brush size right over here. I'm going to bring this up to about 50. I'm just going to type that in. A little larger brush. There it is. And then where you see the space around the dog, that's our selection around the dog, come in and paint along that selection. First paint outside and then come in and just overlap right onto the dog. And just do that clear around. This may need a little bit of touch up around the whiskers, but it's going to be easy to do. And just work your way in. There we go. And then right around down here again, a little ways outside, and then come in for the second pass. Bring it right up against the dog on the second pass. And that should give you a good selection. There we are. Just work clear around the dog this way. There we go. And continue and finish off on this side once you have that done that's a little bit wrong right down here it went in too far I'm going to change here to the erase refinement tool and just kind of paint over that and just clean that out that's good okay once that's all done go over here where it says output to and choose layer with layer mask choose OK there's our layer mask and that hides that part of the layer. Since we didn't change any pixels on this smart object layer, we can go ahead and do that. We haven't actually removed that part, we've just hidden it. There's a little bit of green showing through here and a little bit of green showing around the whiskers. We can fix that easily on the layer mask side. Click on the layer mask side, look for that light blue outline. That means you're on the layer mask. And then go over here and grab this tool right here. This is the burn tool. If you're seeing something different up here just come down to the options and choose that burn tool right there and then with this just paint right over the part you want to clean up and this is right over the whiskers all I'm doing is I'm making the layer mask blacker right in that area and that gets with that little bit of a thin part okay a little bit up along the top here then I think we've got our dog done that looks good okay there you go so those are the different ways to add a photograph or add an image onto a layer inside of Photoshop elements and this is real basic technique and I use it some variation on this in almost every single project I do so this is one of those that you really need to understand how it works and become very good at this you'll be using this technique all the time now if you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to click on share both of those things will help other people find my videos and help spread the word also don't forget to subscribe I do new videos every single week and you don't miss out on any of those new videos and if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop elements the best way to do that is with my complete training course and you'll find links for that right down there in the description